Secrets. The Secret. Awesome. The Secret of YouTube. Hey everybody, welcome to my Facebook questions and my interview that I had with Steve when I was visiting him a few weeks ago. The link for the video is up there if you haven't seen it. Today's video, guys, we're going to ask Steve a lot of different questions. We're going to find out what his camping essentials are. We're going to talk about his worst and favorite meals while camping. If he's ever burnt himself with all of his crazy techniques of starting fires. We're going to ask Steve if he has any favorite videos of his own. Does he even watch his videos? Is there failed or lost videos? We're going to talk to Steve about his filming and editing process and uploading process. We're going to ask Steve what his challenges are as a YouTuber. We're going to ask Steve why he loves camping so much. We're going to ask Steve about Crazy Neighbor, where we met him, how we got his name, all that really cool stuff. We're going to talk about the history of Steve's channel, or Steve's going to talk about it. He's going to actually talk about a time where he was going to give YouTube up. He was going to quit. And what actually made his channel a smashing success, too. He's going to give us some tips and pointers so that you can have a channel just like Steve. And if you're wondering where my chicken hat is today, I don't always wear the chicken hat. You can see um, sometimes he comes into the camera. The chicken hat gives me some confidence um, when I'm out and about filming my videos. And if you wear a chicken hat into pretty much any store with a camera, um, they know you're filming for YouTube and you kind of don't ask, get asked to stop, I found. <laughs> Let's answer some questions. All right, John wants to know if you can only bring four things camping, not including food and water, what would they be? Mm, okay, well, this is a uh, kind of a. Uh... <laughs> this isn't really water, this is more of a. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're kind of a, a, an alone question mm -hmm. there. So, four items. So, the food and water are included. Like... Yeah, it says. So, John says uh, if you could bring four things camping, not including food and water, what would they be? What are well, your four things that you must have? My four things? Well, it's, it's got to be a shelter, right? So tent or hammock or something like that. So that's uh, that's the first one. Second would be a sleeping bag um, because uh, it's cold, right? Uh, <laughs> We've seen you sleep without sleeping bags before. <laughs> I, 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 I've done it. Um, the, uh, I guess, next would be um, a fire starter. Usually... Basically, okay, if we're going strictly items, um, a real good cheating fire starting method, whatever that may be. <laughs> yeah, no rubbing sticks together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably an axe. Dave wants to know what the best and worst meal while camping was. Ooh. Uh, well, that'll take some thought. Uh, the best is always, um, the best I think is. Like a, uh, a chili or something hearty, something warm. Uh, I'm the type where I like to, you know, snack at something throughout the evening. I don't want to sit down with a big steak and, and that type well, of thing. I think the worst is when the stove doesn't work. Mm -mm. And you got to eat everything cold. <laughs> Actually, the worst, I know what the worst is. It's those freeze-dried meals. Uh, they're, I did one in the train wreck, and that yeah. was surprisingly good for what they are. Um, I was I was surprised. The breakfast ones, don't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Nothing like that. It's any of those, the hearty ones. The one I really like is that scalloped potatoes with ground beef and cheese and onions. And that's, mushrooms. that's a good one? That's nice. Yeah, that's, right, that's one of the best ones. One of the but, best ones? Yeah. Awesome. All right, next. Trisha wants to know if you've ever burnt yourself starting a fire. No, actually, surprisingly, I haven't. What I have burnt myself, because I use a, a, a lighter to start the fires, right? And I've been trying to start it before, if I'm not using an accelerant or something. And I'll sit there with the lighter going for probably a minute trying to get that to go. And then I'll burn myself on the, the metal part of the lighter. <laughs> so yeah, that gets super hot, I'm sure. Yeah. What is your percentage of videos that you start and you film part of, but then it doesn't turn into a video? It's low. Pretty it's low. probably maybe five percent if that so one out of 20 is what kind of you're saying yeah there's there's been some and it's normally if something goes horribly wrong like I, if things go wrong i like to leave that in but if things go wrong to the point of the video being crummy uh i'm like okay well this is you know i there was one i was i was i'm still gonna do this one next year uh i won't reveal what it is but uh i was at a campground and i needed to be in a sunny spot uh, for the sake of the video, but that meant I was in the worst location 
uh, really crowded in the campsite, people around me. And uh, when you're out there with a the camera filming yourself, you look like a weirdo. And people are obviously uncomfortable. I'm in there filming, they're getting in the shots, it's loud. I'm like, okay, this is not gonna work. So I had, I had it half filmed, I had to shelve it. I've had ones that I had to film twice under the bridge um, in Camrose. Or no, I wasn't in Camrose. It was, uh, where was I? Maybe Drayton Valley or Pinoca. I think it was Pinoca. You know, I was under the bridge in Pinoca and I have half the video filmed and the camera tips over and the lens breaks. So I had to actually stay in camp for the night without finishing the video. Then I had to drive into Red Deer get a new lens, drive back out, and do the whole camping trip again under the bridge. So that wasn't that pleasurable. Do you re-watch your videos? Like, do you sit there and binge watch your own stuff? No. No, uh, no actually, uh, every time he puts up a video, and I mean some of the videos, and I, I want to watch it. You know, true enough, I was there, I saw it, but I want to see the finished product too. And see, like, oh, I hate watching my own videos. I hate watching I my own videos. I can't. And I, I don't understand like why that. people always. watch them, right? I'm like, yeah. oh, ah, I'm, I'm critical, right? Yeah. Like, oh, well, I should have done a better job in this video or something like that. But I do like to occasionally watch the river raft ones to, to relive those memories. Oh, yeah, me too. Those are my favorite trips with you and me is uh, the yeah. times on the river because every one of them is it's not just a one-night thing. It's, it's like yeah. four or five days at the least, sometimes as much as 10 days. And we have so much fun on the river compared to anything else. And mm -hmm. the, the river trips are, are probably the most hardest ones to do because there's so much work involved in it. And especially the last one because uh, we got really brave and stupid and decided we are gonna float down the river with no means of propulsion <laughs> other than Sticks. us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we really overestimated our uh, abilities. And, and, uh, you looked sore pulling that stuff out of the, the water we later. Were, yeah. but, uh, we, we expected to get like three times farther than we did. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was, yeah, the, the river trips are my absolute favorites. Yeah. Absolute favorites. Do you have any videos that you've filmed kind of completed stuff, but you haven't released that you're going to release future or is it? I wish. Yeah. Um, Pretty much, there's, I guess, the, uh, I'm kind of waiting to get some better um, internet upload uh, speeds here so that I can get that train video up, because that was a fun one. Um, it's normally the behind-the-scenes ones. Uh, sometimes sometimes they don't make it to air. Um, and then, yeah, but it's for, for a big feature video, I would love to have a whole bunch kind of ready to go. But with uh, when I do the beer donations, I have to I have to type those out currently. So when and I do I read them all and I type them all out myself. I don't have somebody doing that. So get through all the beer donations, and they're specifically timed for it's so and so's birthday this week, so and so's birthday that week. So you know I'd I'd love to have videos ready to go like automatically. You can do that on YouTube. You just set them to go live on a certain day at a certain time. Right. But I. Literally, like, I'm filming a video on Wednesday night. I'm getting back home 11, 12 noon, and I have that video edited and uploaded. Oh, there's garbage. garbage. Going to the patio. Just wants to escape. Just open the door for her. Hey, you go. Yeah, so I'll have a... Uh... You want to tug it? Go. You knocked on the door, go. I'll come get you. That's fine. So... So it's three to four hours, and usually it would be ideal if I could spend more time to do that. Uh, but I'm always down to the wire because I, I'm so disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. The videos that don't make it, the five percent that are fails, do you delete the footage, or do you have still save those? I've got them somewhere on memory cards that right. are kind of all over the place. If if I know it's not going to work for video, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't even bother to edit what I have. So there is some footage out there. But, uh, yeah, there's there's been a, just a handful of videos that didn't actually make it to, to the screen. Yeah. What frustrates you when it comes to, like, the whole process? Is you find what's the biggest frustration? Charging things. Uh, um, it's my, my camera. I normally need two, two batteries, two full batteries to get through 
um, filming on my main camera. Then I have to bring the GoPro for the time lapse overnight. Then I have to bring the external battery for the GoPro because the GoPro won't last all night. And um, then I've, I've got to charge my phone. All this stuff has to be charged. I'm actually charging right now <laughs> as we speak. Right. So I have to, you know, charge stuff up. Yeah. Thank goodness for USB-C because uh, it all just takes the same connector so I can get through that pretty easy. For sure. But yeah, everything now takes the same connector. So my drone, same deal. The stealth camping stuff, like probably a third of the backpack is camera gear. Right. So, and the backpack's always full. That's the most irritating thing. It's just the amount of stuff in charging. Cool. All right, let's see. Uh, Karen wants to know why you enjoy camping so much. I love, uh, I love being outside. Um, just there's something about the fresh air, uh, not when it's minus 30 below. Um, but the, it's a great sleep, you know. If maybe not so much in a roundabout, but uh, like being seriously outdoors is. I lived well. When I was in my 20s, I I was staying at my dad's place um, in my early 20s and. He had a little patio, and I would sleep outside all the time, uh, all through the summer. Just slept right out on the deck because it was um, makes me feel alive. I guess I don't know. Nice. I think it's the most natural thing you can do: sleep outside. I do remember great camping trips when I was uh, a kid, and one thing I always remember is when I was a kid, we'd head out to the mountains, and I love the mountains. They're beautiful. Who wouldn't love them? And um, I was probably four years old, five years old on the first, one of the first ones I can remember. And I was, you know, quite short and I'm in my pajamas and there was something so comforting about being in that tent. And, uh, you know, all the adults are still out around the fireplace and, and I'm in my pajamas in the tent and I can see the flicker of the tent reflecting on the side of the wall and I'm just a little kid and I felt so safe to be out there, you know, surrounded with all the family around the fire and, uh, you know, it was, it was cozy, it was an adventure, going into a sleeping bag, and, you know, even as a kid, you know, there's dangers, you know, there's bears out there, I mean, and it's it's one of those things that you trust the adults. Now I'm an adult, so I'm scared of bears, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was just such a, a good, cozy feeling of being out with, with uh, family and relatives all camping in front of a big fire, and, you know, you get to poke the fire with a stick and wave it around and make uh, little circles in the air, and, nice. yeah, it was always fun. What's currently on your playlist at the moment? Uh, Felicity wants to know. My playlist. <laughs> um, okay, well that that's an interesting one. I'll actually, um, I'll see. <laughs> it's it's gonna be boring. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty beige uh, as far as as far as things go. Okay, I don't even know how to find my playlist, um, but I will. Don't you worry here. Um, my playlist it's uh documentaries it's all documentaries it's um i have a documentary on snow plowing i have a <laughs> you know, documentary on snow plowing i watched uh, one yesterday on how uh, dishwashers work <laughs> i had uh, i had this uh the the funniest thing ever uh, i was there with beautiful wife and uh you know, I'm up pretty late, and, like, my eyes are, like, struggling to stay open, and I'm watching documentary, right? And she says, what are you watching? And I'm like, she's like, go to bed, what are you watching? I'm like, it's a documentary about corn. <laughs> it's literally a documentary about the domestication of corn, so it's, uh, I'm boring. <laughs> Callie wants to know, how did you meet Crazy Neighbor, and how did you become friends? Well, I'll join you on this one. All right. <laughs> you know, you know the story. Take it away. Well, Steve and I actually took possession of two separate houses on the same day, right across the alley from each other. I had bought this house across the alley from him with a friend of mine, and Steve had rented the house right across the alley. And before we moved into the house, we did a whole bunch of renovations on our garage. And I was working on the garage and I would see Steve once in a while come up back and have a cigarette and then walk back into the house. Cigar. 
and I had the uh, door open one day, and oh, I'm just going to go introduce myself to the neighbor. and said, hey, I'm your new neighbor. You want to come have a beer? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's how it all started. We just happened to move in the same time, at, right across the alley from each other. We actually were truly neighbors. Nice. Right across the back alley. And the name Crazy Neighbor, how did that come about? Well, Steve asked me to be on a uh, video, and I said, I don't really want my my real name out there. And he says, well, what do you want want me to call you? And I said, well, I'm your neighbor. Just call me Crazy Neighbor. <laughs> and that's how it came about. Who gives themselves their own nicknames? Yeah, I gave right? myself like... my own nickname. Yeah, just call me Crazy Neighbor. I'll, I'll be like Wilson, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. And how long ago was that? Like, when, when did you when did you move into that place? How what, like through, through your video career was it kind of a little over five years ago? Okay, it yeah. was before. Like, I had a modest following um, at that point. You know, like maybe ten thousand subscribers or something. It was it wasn't a huge channel. Um, and then uh, yeah, with the with the help from Crazy Neighbor and uh, support from Beautiful Wife. Uh, the, the thing kind of grew um, a lot more than I expected it to. I thought I would stop maybe 300,000 subs or something. So I, at this point, it's all just, I'm just in shock. Do you remember when your, like the, do you have a first video that went really crazy? Like, do you have, did you have one that kind of set everything off or was it mm, just a gradual? It, it was gradual and it was gradual up until the first stealth camping video. And then that one was the biggest, uh, the biggest change from the normal you know the other videos would be well received like the um electric fence and like it seems mm -hmm. it it seems like it was just yesterday we did that one but that was before i even filmed a stealth camping video i think what really turned the difference is when when you went to school in vermilion and camped in the campground for six weeks or seven weeks or whatever it was while you're going to school i think that was the turnaround point that built up a, a lot of subscribers yeah. uh, for sure yeah. and then uh and then I believe after that, I think if we did the electric fence one after that. I think so, yeah. Because we were listening to Joe Lawrence out there. Yeah, And we I were, would have only yeah. known him from going to school, so. That's right, we were playing Joe Lawrence, yeah. Yes, to keep the bears away. <laughs> so, yeah, that, but. That and Johnny Cash. <laughs> but it's, you know, even at, if you're running a YouTube channel with, uh, let's see, when did I, no, I didn't get the 100,000 subscribers until after the stealth, but. 100,000 you know, was like. I think it was just after Halloween. That's the silver play button, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one was, um, you know, I think after school, like I, the channel might have had thirty thousand subscribers or something like that. Nothing you can really make a living on, um, or even pay for the videos half the time. So when we were like, we're trying to film these videos and going pretty broke doing it. Um, but it was a nice excuse to go camping. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna do this for YouTube. And look, I just wanted to go camping, but uh, we get to a certain point where uh, it just wasn't working anymore. I was like, we'd have to drive like in the city of Edmonton. It is not conducive to camping because there's Crown Land, three hours away, mountains, three four hours away, but there's nothing but farmland around the city. And so, where are you going to camp? And I was going broke, trying to head out to Jasper and the mountains to film these things. So I, I was. I was out of money and people wanted to see more videos and then I said well go into the woods behind the house then right like I didn't think anybody would watch it. it that was the craziest thing I thought basically you know okay I'm throwing in the towel uh, gotta focus more on fixing furnaces and whatnot and I said well this is this is it for me so I, I put up that one that was supposed to be my last video it was the first stealth camping video so that was supposed to be your retirement that was and... pretty much yeah I was wow. like that was thrown in the towel I'm like I can't afford to film these videos anymore I can't afford to drive out to all over the place spending gas you know like I couldn't afford my own merch like people were buying my merch I couldn't afford to buy my own merch <laughs> I'm like okay uh, this it's not working I'm not I don't have what it takes to be an outdoors youtuber and um yeah then after that that was the first one i couldn't believe what was happening but like youtubers that look at you know youtube studio dashboard and stuff i couldn't believe like the, the views off that one made the rest of the hourly views like go perfectly flat and then it's this big spike i'm like you gotta be kidding so i'm like well buckle up guys that's where thursday came from because that video coincidentally happened to come out on a thursday 
And I was like, okay, people Thursday, are watching. People are watching this. Let's <laughs> run with it. See you guys next Thursday. Nice. <laughs> so that's yeah. where that came from. What is your? Do you have any advice for people that are doing similar channels to you, like stealth camping, to kind of beat the algorithm or get uh, get the algorithm going? Like I'm going to give away my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it? Don't get caught. I, I can give I can give people a few t a few pieces of advice. Film something you would want to watch yourself. Uh, that's the river trips. That started with I was looking. I wanted to see somebody going down the river for a trip like uh, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn thing, and I couldn't find one on YouTube. So we went we and filmed one. one. <laughs> yeah, and so did. film something that you would watch yourself. Because um, if you if you're not going to watch it, nobody else is going to watch it. Uh, don't film videos that all look the same. Make everyone look different, because I I follow a lot of channels, and uh, like the outdoors ones especially, it's hard to make a tent in the woods look different every time. Um, it's you, it, it, something has to change, or else it's like you're watching the same video. It's um, like you don't don't want a whole bunch of videos with me camping with my dog. Well, it's uh, there's well, you know vary the titles up a little bit. I like to keep my titles as short as possible. Thumbnail um, makes a big difference. You, you always have, have a catchy thumbnail. The thumbnails are always similar. Like you use the same kind of font. I, that's yeah. That's to give it a brand. So I do that. Yeah. So that when you see a Helvetica bold, um, you know that's a camping with Steve thumbnail, right? It's there's going to be different words and it's going to be a different thumbnail, mm -hmm. but I've and, and that's just strictly by accident. I picked basically the the, the font on the photo editor that was there. And I blew it up as big as I could, make it as few words in as big of a font as I can that contrasts with the background. Hmm. That's the secret. Awesome. The secret of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, garbage. Oh, man. Okay, you should, you should survive. <laughs>the famous e-bike there we go <laughs> sorry i keep seeing things that's the one <laughs> nice yeah it's uh the, the place is like a museum <laughs> no kidding no Steve kidding it's fantastic stuff. so if the county asks it's a birdhouse nice <laughs>